Well, that's not where my lips are. Thinking in my head. <laughs>
kick it off, I'm going to try to keep in somewhat of a chronological order here. So I'll say I remember my first kiss, fourth grade. <laughs> now, it was actually kind of funny because uh, I'm like, hello, like my boyfriend at the time. <laughs> His name was Dan. And he like grabbed my hand and kissed it. And I'm like, well, that's not where my lips are thinking in my head. I'm like, I want to I wanna kiss you. <laughs> I know, my little 10-year-old self. I'm like, I want to kiss a boy. <laughs> so that was, like, hilarious. Um, and then shortly after that, I was like, okay, bye, Dan. And then I, um, I was interested in this other boy. Uh, you see a little bit of a trend here, another D. So his name was Darren, yeah, and we, like, we were, like, inseparable, and, like, we would be together, like, all the time, and so this is, like, fifth grade, whoa. So that was kind of, like, I feel like really, like, my first boyfriend, I guess, for, like, elementary school. Um, I know, moving fast, moving fast. Got big things. So that was just so sweet. And we actually um, we kept in touch for a while because then he ended up changing school. So I was like, no, <laughs> like, where are you in my life? <laughs> um, thinking as like a, a seventh grader, right? Because now I'm at the middle school. He they had moved to like Collegeville or something like that. And then every now and then we'd like try to hang out. But yeah. So that's some of my first young experiences there. <laughs> um, I'm not sure who else can relate. Um, I know some of my friends, some of my best friends, like, like, oh, we didn't, like, kiss anyone until, like, we were 14. I was like, oh, okay, well, here I am. Yeah, 10, 11, 12 years old. <laughs> um how about shifting gears? How about my first cell phone? Okay. So one was kind of a tease because this was like eighth grade. And my mom's like, oh, yeah, here's a cell phone. Here's a cell phone for you and Scott. I'm like, what? What do you mean for me and Scott? <laughs> I'm like, obviously, this is not good. We can't share a phone. Like, it was hilarious because I thought, why, how would they think that, you know, a sister and a brother could share a phone? A cell phone, yeah. I don't know. What was the thought process, Mom? I'll have to ask Denise tomorrow when I see her. So, um, so like, that didn't really count. And then maybe it was, I want to say when I was 16, that I finally had, like, my own phone. I don't think it was 15 yet, but... And it was, you know, a good old LG flip phone, silver, I remember. And it's like, you think this is the coolest thing? Oh, my God. And then that was right around the time where, like, we discovered what texting was. And I remember, like, Scott and I, like, I was in my room at my parents, um... And he was in his room. I'm like, okay, let me, like, send you a hi. <laughs> yeah. And we were, like, dying because they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe, like, you got this message. And we were, like, so, like, amazed. Like, our minds were just, like, what, you know. But, yeah, having your first cell phone, like, that was, like, everything. You could finally almost have, like, your own start to kind of get your own independence right so um oh my gosh and then that just made me think of how there used to be like um some sort of like plan with whatever provider you had where it was like free minutes or something where like they wouldn't count your minutes like after nine starting on friday like through the weekend like and now it's just like it doesn't matter. <laughs> so how funny is that? Um, let's see what else here. Um, how about, so my first, like, 
job, like my first like teenage job, you know, because then it's like, all right, I'm 16, like, all right, like, you know, you have to start earning money, you know, you can't keep cleaning the house. <laughs> like, you need some, you know, actual just experience to see, like, what it's like and have your own responsibility and everything like that. So my first job, oh, my God, it was the best. I worked at Salad Works in Lansdale. That was my first job. And I remember it was July that it was going to be opening. And then I was, like, taking – uh, a vacation with um, it was kind of like my middle school teachers that I stayed in touch with and we did a 10 day trip I kind of touched on this um, in a previous episode with with traveling and whatnot but um, yeah so I remember telling them like oh I'm gonna be like away but then I'll be back like the end of July so then I'd start it then guys this was the best it was the most fun like I had ever had at a job and to have it be your first job, it was just the best thing ever. Like, I couldn't have asked for more because everyone that I worked with was awesome. Like, it was easy to get along with everyone. It was just so great. And it just made, like, working there so much more fun and enjoyable. And, yeah, I remember, well, when we felt like it was going slow, um, one of my co-workers and I we like would write down like the time kind of just like on the hour on a little piece of paper like ah oh, five o'clock cross it out so we then cross out and then we just had like six seven eight and nine left so then we were like looked forward to just crossing that out like it's so crazy um but yeah, it was one of the best experiences I had, like, for a first job. I don't know if anyone had something similar or maybe, like, the complete opposite where it was, like, the worst thing ever. Um, but to have, you know, your first teenage job and you're earning your own money and it was awesome. Um, especially when you get, like, 50% off the salads, yeah. Of course, I did get, like, a free meal while I was there because I got to eat. I mean, girls got to eat, you know. Um, I don't want to be passing out. So, so yeah, that was pretty good. Um, how about traveling? Um, now, I have been on – I think the first time I was on a plane was when I was two going over to Germany. But the first time – traveling internationally alone okay are you with me traveling internationally alone I went to Spain that's when I did my study abroad I loved it it was great it's kind of like you're just thrown in there and you, you figure it out and using all your street smarts and understanding maps and how things work with the plane <laughs> um but truly it was it was very enjoyable to just like be on my own and I feel like I think even around then like I noticed even more how I like having the independence and being on my own as opposed to like being with someone else there with me I know that might sound, sound kind of odd but it's true, and I think that's kind of where, you know, that introvert side comes out, too, which I talked about on kind of a recent episode. r and r like an introvert or extrovert. Check it out. Um, but yeah, it was just nice. Like, I don't have to, like, hear anyone talk in my ear for eight hours. I can just do my own thing. And the flight itself, it wasn't fully booked, so I actually got to move back a row and had the whole thing. So it's pretty nice. Got to just sit back and enjoy it. Um, and then I'd say even like getting there. So now when I like finally got there and it's like, oh, my God, like what did I just decide to do? Because <laughs> you're in a different country. It's a foreign country. And here is Spanish just firing away. But I enjoyed every second of it. Um, and I'll, I can touch on more of, of that experience specifically 
in another episode because that I can just talk about for days. Um, okay, so how about, so I told you about my first teenage job. So how about my first job out of college? Jesus, like, all right, it's like you graduate and it was May and you come home from college, you're back with your parents, and now it's like you have to find a job. Because pretty soon you got to start paying those loans. Yeah. Like, what kind of deal is that, right? So, with the paying loans part. Um, But it was hard. It was hard to find something. Um, It just, it doesn't happen right away because, hmm, I don't know. Employers want experience that you don't have because you literally just graduated. So you're literally trying to find any kind of job that you could possibly do because of that. And that's a whole other discussion too is what I want to talk about is just like the opportunity here. Like it's supposed to be this whole great thing and then it seems impossible to fucking get a job. Like that's that's not the what anyone should go through especially coming out of college like you there should be more guidance there and more opportunity because you have this great wealth of knowledge now um you have your degree like does that not matter like i don't understand like so anyway i'm gonna get too far off track there but i do want to yeah really dive into that on another episode um so anywho i end up finding a job um, so graduate in May and then it must have been, I believe, November. Um, oh my gosh, I wish you could see right now what is happening because, um, Moo was like trying to speak into the microphone and I don't know what she's doing. Please remove yourself, Moo Moo. <laughs> um, okay. So here we go. So yeah. I found a job and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this, is this real? And then before you know it, it's like you get hired. And so it was a, for a, uh, a market research, like business development assistant. So I was like, oh, this sounds cool. Do you think they told me in my interview that I would be cold calling? Nope. Yeah. Seriously? I would have not have taken that job I don't want a cold call like so here was in the furniture industry and I had to sell these manual bed frames that adjust to your head and your foot yeah but manual manual are the key words here because now they all of that stuff that's all um electronic you know you press a couple buttons oh my head's up oh no my feet are up so this was just terrible. This was the worst job. Well, one of the worst jobs, right? So, and then before you know it, now it's like the end of December and I come back from, and at the time I was seeing my ex, you know, in Michigan and for Christmas, didn't I come back and then they laid me off? What the hell? They knew I was going to be traveling out there. And you don't think they could have said something to me that when you get back after Christmas, mind you, I ha- I worked the day after Christmas, too. So it wasn't even like way like days after or even like January. So I wasn't really there that long to begin with. And then they come back and it's like, oh, we have to let you go. I'm like, what? (laughs) Yeah, you just hired me. So you hired me why? You know, oh, my God. That place, ew. And one time I was sitting there. I remember getting at my desk and it was like, I was in this warehouse in Colmar. And so not only was it freezing in there, I thought something was happening out of a movie. I'm getting ready to sit down. And there's this, like, spider just like hanging on the the web 
and it was just like shooting down like a like straight down you know how like the spiders just like climb down like stealthily you know like a ninja right kind of like mission impossible where he's coming down he can't touch the floor you know what i'm saying it was like that and i'm like this is disgusting <laughs> so you know more or less it was good i got out of there but it was annoying because I'm like, I just got this and now I have to start again. Like, this is crazy. So do you have some kind of experience like that? I mean, where you started somewhere and maybe you liked it, but maybe you didn't like it. And then before you know it, you're gone. You're gone. Yeah. And I have a lot more to tell you about that particular place because it was not so fun. No, 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 no. Um, but enough about that. How about something fun? So I remember when I bought my car, my Subaru Impreza, five years ago. Yeah. And this week will literally be like to the day, five years. So yeah, and I had been here in Kanchi and I had my old... 95 Camry or should I say Amry because the C fell off <laughs> and yeah it was like the most exciting experience like that you could have because this is this is your car like you just bought this and this is in your name and now that's it like you have to take care of it you know you do what you want with it things like that and yes, I bought it. I did not lease it because I think leasing is a waste of money. I said it. Um, and yeah, so pretty soon my car payment will be paid off. So I'm so excited. I'm going to be like rich. <laughs> I feel like after this, not really, but you get the idea. And um, what else here? How about getting your first pet? The first pet of, you know, for yourself, not your family pet, because that is different. And Moo is staring at me now. But yeah, I had always wanted to get a cat of my own. So I figured once I did get my own place, you know, then I could have my cat. And I just remember looking for like different cats and you know, seeing different pictures and it's like, well, how, how do I even do this? And, but, um, so I just, yeah, I saw pretty girl Mew, little tuxedo. I feel like once I start seeing some of these tuxedo cats, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need her. Like, I need my little Mew. And she was at this little kitty cafe, the Black Cat Cafe in Devon, I believe. Um, and that was through, um, I think it's called the, the Pals Adoption Society or something like that. Yeah, and I got to meet her. And I think that was like the most uh, fun part too, just getting to see her and not just like, you know, getting her and that's it it's like you have to get to know like the cat a little bit or and I feel like any pet in general because you don't know how they're gonna like react with you right and so she was so playful and so friendly and sociable and I'm like this is exactly the cat I want and then before you know it I'm taking her home so it was just a wonderful experience and I'm so glad that I have her so except when she steps on my laptop and then deletes things. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Um, let's see. I have a couple more on here for you guys. Um, yeah, one that was fun. Well, before I say that one, how about living with a significant other? The first time that you do that, that's kind of a big deal, and people don't really warn you. They don't really tell you the, you know, what really goes down. You know what I'm saying? You get my, my nudge. Um, 
But yeah, it's, you know, you got to co coexist with this other person and it can be hard, but it is what it is. First time for everything, right? And you have to adapt to one another and understand each other. So, you know, it was definitely an experience for Matt and I. <laughs> no, everything's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially, you know, I was living by myself and it's like, all right, that's pretty much donezo for the rest of my life. <laughs> what, am I going to buy another house? Like, just one house for myself that I can, like, sneak off to? Maybe. Hey, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. So that's been fun. And what else? How about hosting your first party? So last year when we had moved in here, um, into this place, we were thinking, we're like, oh, like, when should we have a housewarming party? Like, you know, now that we have space and, like, a little, like, yard in the back, thought, like, we really want to, like, entertain and, you know, I like to cook and just, like, have people over. So we had the housewarming party in January, okay? And this Saturday, it was, like, a an oddly warm day in January. So it was kind of nice in a way because no one was, you know, we're not, like, frozen solid with, like, it being cold in the house or anything. You know, we had the windows open. Um, so it was fun. But, you know, there's there's a lot that goes into it. You have to, like, get everything set up. And I know that sounds like, oh, my God, like, so much work for a party. But seriously, it's like you have to organize it. You have to have everything ready to go. Pick everything up. Make sure you got enough beer, liquor, drinks, you know. Um, all the food is ready. Crockpot is on, you know what I'm saying? So first time for everything. But I, it went really well. Like, and Matt and I, we had a lot of fun with everyone and just, like, kind of, you know, doing it together um, and really just, you know, having a good time with our friends and family. So, and then speaking about parties, the first time – um I had a surprise party was that following month so in February February 1st is my birthday and Matt did an awesome job with surprising me for my birthday so my mom her birthday is like six days prior to mine um so everything was thrown off because we were going out to dinner for her birthday and then it was like boom like, oh, like, let's go to the Ambler, you know, brewery. And, like, that was the plan all along. But mind you guys, that entire week I was sick. And going out to dinner, I was still sick. And I thought all I want to do is go to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, all right, we're going to eat dinner. I might get a beer at Ambler Beer Company. And we're going to go home. Like, what a great night. Yeah. So then we get to Ambler Beer Company, and I'm totally, like, I tell you, I kid you not, I had zero idea. I had no idea. <laughs> not even, like, an inkling of what was happening. And then, so we actually know the people there. Um, they're neighbors of my parents. So we say hello to them real quick, and... You know, my peripheral, I guess, was not working because I could not see anyone to my left. Like, just because I wasn't looking for people to be surprising me, right? And then I'd look over and I was like, well, that kind of looks like Ben. And then they're like, surprise! <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. I can't even imagine, like, what my face expression looked like because I cannot hide it. So it was probably, like, like chronic bitch face, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, are you serious? Everyone is here. And then I thought, oh, my God. Like, I had to talk to these people now, and I'm so tired, and I feel sick, and I just don't feel well. But all in all, it was such a fabulous time. I could not believe he pulled it off, and I know my mom helped a lot, too. 
And so it was it was really special. So um, just because I never had something like that before. And so for that being the first time for my 30th was just amazing. Um, so that kind of wraps everything up. I kind of, you know, wanted to hit um, some things from I was a child to a teenager to an adult and all that. So I hope you guys can relate a little bit, you know, throughout your, um, you know, childhood and adulthood um, and any new experiences that maybe has happened. I don't know, like the pandemic. Uh, first time for everyone, right? So be sure to listen on uh, thebigdamnpodcast.com slash podcast. And guys, remember... All the platforms are there. So once you get to the site, you can pick. You look at the little icon, Spotify, Google, Apple, and Stitcher. Yeah, I got it all for you. So got to keep everything open, all the possibilities, right? And then if you want to send me a message, so just go over to the contact section on the website. So thebigdamepodcast.com slash contact. Bow, 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 bow. Um, yeah, and be sure to get all the latest and greatest updates on Facebook and Instagram. And once you're done all of that, if you have just 30 seconds of your time, please go to ratethispodcast.com slash the big dame podcast. Okay, and I can see your review and your feedback. Um, all right, so I really appreciate it. Thanks in advance and enjoy the rest of the week. And I hope you really liked the episode. All right, peeps, I will talk to you later. Peace out.